Thank you so much for joining me. This was a really three-part series of tiles that I had done kind of sequentially. This was actually the first one that I had done. Um, but I had just gotten some really sad news about a friend and at that point in time didn't really want to narrate out loud. So I kind of decided to go back and do the voiceover for this instead. So on this um, big uh, 10 inch hex tile, um, what I'm doing is I'm putting down my pillow, which is my Glidden's Essential interior house paint. Um, and I, my plan here was to do a triple bloom. And I tried a couple before and I didn't really space them close enough together. So I was trying this kind of triangular formation here to see how it went. That first color I'm putting down is the Amsterdam Ultramarine. One of my favorite colors. I love blues and purples, but that one and the Prussian blue really have a place in my heart. Um, this is my Artist Loft Axazine Purple. And I did try to make the blooms a little bit different. Um, I didn't want the colors to be exactly the same, so you'll see me kind of varying the colors back and forth. So I started with the blue on the two, and then started the purple with the other one, and now I'm going to flip the order to make sure I have all of the colors just in a different sequence. Then this next color I'm putting down is actually um, a mica pigment powder from Michaels. It's their Recollections pigment powder in red blue. And I really like this one because depending on the angle that you look at or the background color, you see either the red or blue sparkles. And then this one is from the same collection, except it's the turquoise color. I haven't quite gotten around to getting any piggies or any of the eye candy pigments, although they're on my list. Um, but these have really worked for my color schemes and have given me some really good sparkle. Here you can see I'm adding the Amsterdam Permanent Blue Violet. This one you get some really cool color gradients. It is a pretty dominant color too, so you have to be careful not to use too much of it. And here I'm using the Prussian Blue, again one of my favorite colors. I wasn't too concerned about all the drippings because I knew this was going to spread pretty far. Here you can see I'm just going back and adding that red blue Michaels pigment and then I'll go back with the turquoise on the other one as well. So all of the blues in this had the same colors but the layering was just slightly different. And I always do try to balance the pigments with the sparkle with a non-sparkly color in between. Here you can see I'm adding in my cell activator. Um, and I did this one bloom at a time. I think when I had done a triple bloom before I did all three at the same time and the cell activator had really sunk into the other two blooms before I had a chance to blow them out. So based on some advice I'd gotten um, was to do one at a time. So I think that worked out much, much better. So you can see here as I added, I'm blowing across the paint, trying not to go into the pillow, but to really spread it out um, and get some good cell formation. And then I'm going to save that um, puddle in the middle, the center one, for last. So it's, it's a careful balance between making sure you add enough cell activator to get good cells, but not too much that you end up with a big kind of blob left over. I always think about what I'm trying to blow when um, we were a kid. We used to play around with the bottles and blow across the top of those. And that's what I always think about as I'm doing this, is how am I blowing the paint across the top of the paint? Uh, but you can see there's a few times, like right there, where I went a little bit too deep and went into the pillow. Not the end of the world, just means you'll have kind of a white spot there. Which isn't the greatest, but when I do the wrecking, you can kind of cover that up and use the white to highlight and accent some of the other colors. So here you can see I'm going back into the center bloom. Which does mean I'm going to squish and kind of push the other two that I've already done. But that's okay.
here I notice I had just a little bit more of kind of a puddle of that black so I wanted to blow into it a little bit to get it to break up and start making some cells. For this next part what I'm going to do is use my little bamboo stir stick to um, wreck the design a little bit, give it some flair, add some swirlies in there. Um, different people have different techniques. I know um, I've seen people that make them look more like petals or flowers. I kind of go for a more abstract design. I just like the swirls to kind of bring the colors together and to break up some of the um, color chunks that might not have as many swirls or uh, cells. It gives them just kind of a unique appearance. And I know um, because this tile has already dried and finished that I got some really cool 3D effects in here where it almost looked like rolls of paper or something is what it reminded me of in that center area there from the swirls. But you can see I use lots of little loopies and create kind of just little little fingers or little swiggles that just help to kind of mix the colors and give it some interesting features. I've seen people that do a more spiral type design. So really it just kind of depends on what the piece says to you or how it kind of presents itself in terms of what would, would make it look really pretty. And I always try to keep in mind, I don't want to do anything too fancy on the outside because when I spin it, chances are a lot of this is just going to get spun out. And since I focus most of my designs on the outside, um, you don't really end up seeing a lot of those, but the ones that you'll see kind of where the blooms join together, those you will see. So um, you'll notice that I'm really intentional in my patterns to kind of connect the different blooms together. And then once I feel like I've gotten it in a good place, I'm going to start to spin it out. The idea here is spreading out those cells to get, um, this is where you can get some really good peacocking going on with the different colors in the same cell. You might even get some good lacing. Um, here I noticed that the bloom was kind of tilted a little bit. So you can see me here trying to shift the paint down a little so that I'll get more of it to spread out. Because I have the triple bloom, I also don't want to spin it too fast or too hard because I do, don't want to lose those two blooms that are on the end. Which is always a challenge when you do a multi-bloom like this because since they're on the outside edge, that centripetal force wants to push them out. But you can see here I got some really pretty color gradients in the different cells, the swirls have some really good definition to them. You see me jiggle it there to see if I got the paint thin enough. And then from there, I'm going to scoop this up to put it on its drying tray. These are a little bit heavier, so it takes a little bit more to get them off of the spinner when they're done. But um, thank you very much for joining me on this. I hope that you uh, enjoyed the process and the kind of narration afterward. Um, would love to have earned your subscription and hear any comments you have about this video or things that you would like to see in an upcoming video. Thank you again for joining me.